This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. A lot of fun games coming up in week number three across the NFL, which means a lot of chances to buy some player props, potentially betting some unders in these fun games. Who can say? We're going to talk to JJ Zacharyson about these week three games and get his favorite props across the board for this week. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, joined here once again by JJ Zacharyson of LateRound.com. You can check him out on Twitter at late round QB and check out the late round of fantasy football podcast. JJ, welcome back in. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. I'm good. I, I, I like this slate. I feel like there's some really interesting games on it. Um, so I'm really excited for week three. I am too. I think it's going to be a blast like a football fan, but hopefully a blast from a betting and a DFS perspective as well. We're going to dive into what those game environments mean for prop betting. We're trying to talk about some regression and much more in JJ's favorite props for week number three. But if you're looking for a full like sides, totals, money lines, breakdown of this week, we did do that yesterday with Ryan Williams that is up now on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and FanDuel's YouTube page. Also, our college football betting podcast with Dr. Ed Fang is up on the YouTube page and on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Find that wherever you get your podcasts and hit subscribe. Twisted T and FanDuel have joined forces to bring you a -a one-of-a-kind contest series. Gives you a chance to compete for your share of thousands of dollars in site credit. Introducing Twisted T's College Football Picks, a sports betting-focused contest series that is entirely free to play. The contest is simple. Each college football game will be assigned money lines, spread, and total markets with assigned point totals for each market. All you have to do is make six selections based on those three markets and earn points for the each correct selection you make. If at the end of the day, your score ranks among the best in the contest, you'll be eligible to win your share of site credit. Head to FanDuel.com slash Twisted picks and make your picks. And a reminder, please drink responsibly. FanDuel.com slash Twisted picks let's dig into this week three slate and like i said jj a lot of fun games on this slate big totals tight spreads i love that as a dfs player but i'm curious about that from a prop betting perspective do we go kind of nutso with props a la the tyreek hill jalen waddle rashad bateman mark andrews fiasco last week what role does game environment play for you in betting props Yeah, so I I think the one thing to always keep in mind is that some players are game script dependent. Um, And and I think that we can get really enamored with what lines are saying uh, about these games. You know, for instance, the, you know, if you think that the, or the line says that uh, a certain game is, you know, a point and a half or something and it's supposed to be close and maybe the total is really, really high. I, I think it's really important to not overstate what that says because obviously lines aren't perfect and it's not going to be perfect. And so, the, the easy way to sort of go about every single week, um, regardless of game environment, regardless of game script, is to find players who aren't as game script dependent, right? Um, you know, like I said, we don't know how these games are going to go down. So it's just a lot safer and easier to go after, uh, after players who, um, you know, are going to be on the field no matter what. And you have a better idea of how to project those players, generally speaking. I mean, you can, you know, there, there's still ways to, to use game script to your advantage and use, these game environments to your advantage in some way. Um, but, you know, I, I think that, that you know, we, we can sit here and say that the Texans and Bears, for for instance, this week is going to be a low scoring game. I think that we would feel pretty confident in that. Um, but it could end up being that one of these teams blows out the other team. I mean, it's, it's a very possible scenario. But if you don't have a player that you're betting that is necessarily dependent on one of those scripts happening, um, then then you're fine. And it's, it's a little bit easier to, to project and predict how things will go down. So. Um, you know, I, I do think that that a lot of times too, uh, a lot of times the uh, these these player props will align with what the total is saying, right. right? And so there's some value that you can find. I'll talk about that a little bit later with with one of my bets. But uh, you know, there is some value that you can find when uh, you know a game total is supposed to be really really high, and maybe a player prop is just kind of out of whack. But yeah. you know, generally speaking, there is some correlation there. You know, if a, if a game is supposed to go nuts in terms of scoring and a lot of yards and stuff, then that's going to be reflected in the player's line. Right. Um, So I I think that, that the the big thing overall is to continue to find players 
who are likely not going to be super game script dependent. I think the key there is you're just you're giving yourself more paths to being right. If exactly. they are not game script dependent, you're just a, you, you're giving yourself outs. And I think that that's kind of the key thing always. Whether it be more paths to an under or an over, you want those paths, high probability paths to be in place. Yeah. Now, a big part of your work, JJ, revolves around regression, uh, specifically for touchdowns for the most part, but they can apply to other fields as well. What do you look to when you're trying to pinpoint regression when it's just a, a two-game sample that we have so far this year? Yeah, look, almost everything in football and football statistics regresses, like almost literally everything. Mm -hmm. um, touchdowns are the easiest way to sort of spot that regression because they really do have a lot of variance. They can be random, especially in a two-game sample. I mean, touchdowns can just be all over the place. Um, you know, if a quarterback has a really, really high touchdown rate, a book might be reflecting that to start the season, and then you can obviously bet the other direction just because there is so much variance. But I, I think that that people look at the player level a little bit too much with touchdown regression and with regression in general, when you could look at the team level too. For instance, uh, you know, I tweeted out a chart yesterday showing the number of total offensive yards that teams have had versus how many touchdowns they've scored. And generally speaking, over the last decade or so, uh, we've seen 145.7 uh, offensive yards per touchdown scored. So if a team is way underperforming in that, you know, maybe they've had like 350 total offensive yards per touchdown, like the Broncos. I don't know what their exact number is, but they're last. It's high. Right now. When yeah. you have Javante Williams, and Melvin Gordon fumbling on the one that'll jack that number up real fast. Exactly. Exactly. And like, that's the example in a two game sample where like you look at the Broncos and you see Javante and Melvin Gordon fumbling at the one. Well, all of a sudden, if they didn't fumble at the one, that's a, to we have a, a totally different viewpoint on what the Broncos offense looks like right now, more than likely. Um, and so that, that's the one thing to, to really keep in mind is at the team level, and it, it, it goes beyond just like, uh, you know, how, uh, or, or the amount of touchdowns that the team has versus the amount of yards they have. You could look at how teams are scoring touchdowns. You know, a lot of teams, uh, you know, you, you can see that, that, that some teams like the dolphins, for instance, they, uh, the, the dolphins and the, who do I have in my, in my notes? Uh, the Dolphins and the Jets currently have a combined 12 passing touchdowns. They have zero rushing touchdowns. That's uh -huh. not going to maintain. That ratio yeah. does not keep up uh, you know, week over week over week over week. And so what you can do then is obviously fade passing attacks a little bit in terms of touchdowns and then boost up the rushing attacks a little bit. I mean, this is a, a tale as old as time. I mean, this happens every single year where people assume that, no, no, this is the way that it's going to be for this offense. It's just yeah. not how it works. I mean, there's going to be outliers, of course. But even if you look at, uh, you know, the commanders right now have a seven pass to rush attempt ratio or, or, or touchdown ratio, meaning they've, they've thrown seven touchdowns and they have one rushing touchdown uh, over the last 11 years. Only five teams have finished with that high of a ratio. So, you know, right. that things are going to shift a little bit as the season goes on. And sometimes books don't reflect that. It could be different for the Jets, given that their quarterback is elite in Joe Flacco. You know, obviously yeah. you want your you want the, the ball in his hands towards the red zone. So I think that's maybe one spot where you can see an outlier. But other than that, I'm fully on board. Now, the other thing that we could look towards is ambiguous situations. And the goal there being because you're deep in the weeds of ranking players every week, the idea would be that you have a better feel for depth charts, for roles, stuff like that. The bookmakers may have. So any ambiguous situations you're looking to attack this week, whether the prop markets are up now or not? Yeah. So one thing that you can always look at with this kind of stuff is, you know, uh, books will often just look at like final stat lines and they'll, mm. and they'll judge based on that. But the running back position in particular can really uh, throw you off with that. I mean, you can, you can see it with the wide receiver position too. If a guy's running a lot of routes and maybe he just didn't see a lot of targets in one game, what have you. But I think running back is the most uh, interesting and a perfect example of that is new England right now. Uh, week one, uh, we had like a three-way ba uh, backfield split where we had Ramondre Stevenson, Damian Harris, and Ty Montgomery all seeing a good number of looks. Damian Harris ended up seeing more uh, carries than Ramondre Stevenson at nine to eight in that week one game. He actually out-targeted Stevenson three to two. He ran more routes than Stevenson. He had 10 routes to Stevenson's five. Ty Montgomery's then out in week two, and everyone sees, oh, Damian Harris was, was able to maintain what he did because he had 15 carries. Ramondre Stevenson had nine, uh, and they had the same number of targets. But Ramondre Stevenson had a snap share of 62% in that game, and he ran 23 routes to Damian Harris's nine. Ramondre Stevenson actually absorbed the Ty Montgomery workload last week. It's just that it didn't convert to actual production. And so those are sort of the situations that I look at where I say, okay, uh, books are probably going to be a little bit high on Damian Harris, maybe a little bit low on Ramondre Stevenson. We can attack that way. And you can do that with every single backfield. I mean, obviously, some backfields are, are going to be more obvious when there's a bell cow and they're just going to continue to use that guy. But a lot of times, you know, teams... Um, you know, there, there's a lot more to the peripherals uh, than what's being shown in the production.
Yeah, I think that uh, with the Patriots, too, the ideal route there, it would be looking at the rushing plus receiving props to take advantage of fully yeah. of like once they're posted, they're not, they're not up yet, but once they're up, I would take a look at those because it gives you, again, multiple paths to if you want an over for Ramondre Stevenson or an under for Damian Harris. I think looking at that specific market to take advantage of that specific role, that's the way I'd want to play things right there. So, okay, we got a decent number of props up actually already here on Friday morning. So, JJ, when you look at the board at FanDuel Sportsbook, which numbers stand out to you? Yeah, let's start with uh, Travis Etienne. Right now, you know, I mentioned the game script stuff earlier, um, you know, and how some running backs and some players are going to be more game script dependent. I think Travis Etienne is a good example of that, where in a negative game script, you're likely going to see him on the field a little bit more. And what we've seen out of Jacksonville, you know, week one, sort of neutral game script, maybe slightly negative for Jacksonville. Week two, a super positive game script against Indianapolis. And so we saw a lot of James Robinson this past week uh, against Indianapolis, which makes total sense because he's the early down back for that team. But if you look at how they've deployed ETN versus James Robinson to start the season, ETN's seen 66%, two thirds of the team's third down snaps uh, at the running back position so far this year. Right now, his line, uh, receiving yards line is 16 and a half at minus 120. I'm going to take the over there. Uh, not only uh, because he's basically been able to do that uh, to start the season already in both games, but uh, this could be a negative game script against the Chargers. He's had a 10% target share in these two games, uh, despite you know relatively neutral to positive game scripts for Jacksonville. You know they're big underdogs. I don't know if that's going to happen this week, so I like Travis Etienne to hit the over there, um, and maybe that would lean some of the James Robinson unders if you if you want to go that route as well. Um, another one. This one's over on DK, but Tom Brady. His line, and, and you know, we'll see what his line said at FanDuel at, at this time. You know, it wasn't set there, but um, you know, Tom Brady, uh, his line was at 245 and a half passing yards, um, and that was at m- minus 115. I'm going to take the under uh, with that. Uh, Brady's averaging 30 and a half pass attempts per game over the first two weeks of the season. He was at 42.3 last year. I think that's kind of getting baked into this a little bit. The Packers have a good secondary. Brady's going to be without probably Chris Godwin and definitely Mike Evans, who's suspended. Uh, this game has a really low over under. I mean, this is not a projected shootout game, despite the quarterbacks who are playing. So, you know, I, I think that this line really reflects Tom Brady having healthy weapons when those weapons are just not healthy. So, you know, my my projections actually have him a good bit lower, like over 20 yards lower than what that line is showing. And then the last one that I want to throw out there on, on the yardage front uh, is Joe Mixon. I like the over 73 and a half rushing yards at minus 114. The Bengals are big favorites in this game. Mixon has seen 95.8% of the team's running back rushes this year, which is might be the best in the league. I I had to have to to double check, but it's at least top three in the league. Uh, He's hit, he's hit this mark in one of two games so far this year when neither game that he's played in has been a very positive game script. Now they get the jets. Uh, They, that's a way better matchup than what they faced should see a nice positive game script in that game. Um, I've got him projected for almost 90 rushing yards and he's at 73 and a half. So uh, there's definitely some value there. I think this might be another DK one, but I, I'd have to check with with uh, what with what Fanduel's offering, and I'll probably be around the same. Um, you know, but but the other thing too, you know, I I, I just I, I think that people will just generally see what the Bengals have done the first two weeks of the season, and not really weigh in in the fact that they faced two really 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 good fronts. Uh, you know, they got Pittsburgh in Week One with a healthy TJ Watt. They had Dallas last week, uh, whose you know defense is is strong. I mean, it's not that's not the weak part of that team right now. Right. Um, and so I, I think Mixon has a good chance to hit the over here. Yeah, the Mixon number is up at FanDuel, 73 and a half over there is go. minus 114 there. And we saw the Jets get shredded by Nick Chubb last week. I think that defensive front is pretty good, but I don't know if it matters enough against yeah. uh, someone as good as Joe Mixon right now. So we talked earlier about regression and a big part of regression is for touchdown props. Talk about that at a team level. When you're looking at the touchdown props for this week, any standing out for you right now? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw some. I mean, I, I like to just kind of go get a little crazy with touchdown props because it's more fun that way, right? Um, I, I'll start with one player who I, I don't pe- think people realize how decent his usage has actually been to start the year, and it's Traylon Burks. Right now, Burks is at plus 280 as an anytime touchdown scorer. He saw target shares of 16% and then 29% in his first two games. His route participation. This past week, week one, it wasn't great. This past week, it rose to 63%. They're using him more and more. Um, And and then if you look at how he's actually performed, of the players with 10-plus targets this year, only Stefan Diggs, Jalen Waddell, Rashad Bateman have a higher yards per route run than Traylon Burks does. Decent enough matchup against the Raiders. Um, It's at least better than what he saw in Buffalo. I don't think we're at risk of them resting starters and not necessarily throwing their guys uh, on the field. 
So I think Traylon Burks is a pretty interesting anytime touchdown score this week with, with decently long odds at plus 280. Uh, another, another actually pairing, uh, my, my final two touchdown scores. It's from the same game. They're actually from the same team. I'm going to go to this Minnesota Detroit game where we could see a shootout in this game, you know, domed environment, uh, you know, two teams, two offenses that are, uh, relatively decent or looking decent enough, um, has the highest over under in the week. Like I said, so points should be scored. Detroit's the underdog. So Detroit could see negative game script, which means, which means more throwing, which means that the the way they do score their touchdowns could come through the air versus on the ground. The first one I'm going to say is Amon Ross St. Brown, where on FanDuel he's at plus 105, but on DK you can get him at plus 135 uh, for, for an anytime <laughs> touchdown score. For Amon so, Ross freaking St. Brown? For Amon Ross St. Brown, yes. <laughs> he has a 33.8% target share this season. Uh, he's a monster. He's four red zone targets. That's one of the highest in the league as well. So Amon Ra, I think over on DK at plus 135 is unbelievable value. But on that same team, I actually think that you could look to DJ Chark as well. Uh, oh. Because last week he throws out that goose egg. I understand how tilting that was for many people playing DFS and even betting. Uh, yeah, within that it was game. me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 33% but, yeah. DJ Chark. What could go wrong, right? Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Everything could go wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a high variance player, but that's yeah. sort of what you want for a prop like this at plus 230. Yeah. Um, he has two end zone targets this year. He actually has underperformed in the touchdown column according to PFF's uh, expected touchdown uh, metric. He, has, he should have 1.7, but he has one. Um, so, you know, again, in this game where there should be a lot of scoring, uh, I do think as my final bet, uh, that DJ shark makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Going back to the trail on Burks one, I think the other advantage of that is that the thing that the Raiders do best defensively outside of rush the passer is they're pretty good against the run. And yeah. I think that's going to make Tennessee probably against their will be more pass heavy than they typically would be. Trail on Burks had a good, good role in that game on uh, Monday night. Thought he looked pretty good too. And it seemed like Tannehill was going towards him early in that game. So plus 280, I mean, like that's pretty good for a guy of his body type um, yeah. and with the role that he has right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they're going to use him again more and more in this offense because he's, he was a really raw prospect. Like yeah. he, he wasn't like a polished Garrett Wilson or even Drake London. He was a very raw prospect and, and you know, he's filling big shoes with AJ Brown, but <laughs> you look at this offense and there's really not a lot to really rely on and go to. And this team isn't necessarily going to going to run a lot of 11 personnel, a lot of three wide receiver sets, just the way the offense is set up and situated. So, you know, they have a really interesting slot matchup this week, uh, but they just don't use a slot receiver as much as other teams do. So I do think that Traylon Burks makes a ton of sense. I do too. Plus 280, a very good number for Traylon Burks. You can get that one over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Again, DJ Chark and Amon Ross St. Brown, the other ones to look at, but line shop for both those to get the best number wherever you can. That's all we got here for week number three from you, JJ. Again, check out JJ on Twitter at Late Round QB. Check out the uh, Late Round Fantasy Football podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, and LateRound.com. JJ, good luck to you this week. I hope your props and uh, all your season-long teams go well, your DFS teams too, and we'll talk to you once again next week. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All righty. That is all we have for this week here on Covering the Spread as well. Go check out our college football and NFL betting podcast right here in this same feed by searching for covering the spread and checking out the FanDuel YouTube page. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in. Good luck to you with your bets across the entirety of week three. We'll talk to you once again on Monday to get you set for some Monday night football. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.